Hello, welcome back to Transformation TV. We just had a little glitch that I informed you about, but hey, no worries. I'm not going to let anything like that ruin my happiness. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot to be thankful for and a lot to be happy. And I was talking to you a few minutes telling you my story and how I have learned to find happiness again. And one of the ways I had to do it was to first process my grief. And then the second thing I had to do was begin to reframe and change my brain. And it is so appropriate that we have our guest today, Patricia Maddalena, because she is an expert in knowing the brain. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about her. She has studied NLP, she is a master trainer, and she has been doing this for since 2004. She studied neuroscience, she studied energy psychology, hypnotherapy, metaphysics, quantum physics. She's an expert in the biology of belief, the laws of the universe, and the laws of attraction. And she's amazing. In addition, in addition to that, the reason that she's our guest today is because she is a best-selling author of the book, The Happiness Hacker. So with that, uh, I'm gonna bring Patricia on, but there's one thing I forgot, Patricia, there's many things, you're, you're multifaceted. She is an integra integrative therapist, and maybe we'll hear more about that. But as of now, I'm going to bring our guest on. Hi, Patricia. Wow, thank you. <laughs> wow, yes, how, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? Um, after that kind of, uh, ta -da, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if this was maybe this this is what kind of happens in the universe. This was a test for authenticity. Are we yeah. still happy? Are we still happy? <laughs> we still happy. Yes, of course. Yeah, I'm. I'm always uh, pretty much always happy. And then if I'm not, I'll hack it. <laughs> Yeah, well, and that's what you know. That's what your book is about. So you know, yeah. maybe you can begin by telling us, like, why you chose that title and why you wrote this book. We'll just begin with that because there's a okay. lot. Um, so the the, I suppose over the years, uh, and it's been quite a few years that I've been working with people. Um, I kind of come to conclude that we all want something quite similar in life yeah so you know and that's anybody so no matter who comes to me whether that's for some kind of addiction or anxiety or stress or depression or PTSD or they're right on the brink of it you know they're on their knees in life um, they come to me and they're really ready to release uh, those old traumas that have been holding them back and they're really ready to you know finally let go of those um, emotional wounds and negative experiences that, that that has been drawing their energy, making them ill. Um, and the reason why they want to let all of that go is because, in essence, they want to feel happy. They want to feel um, safe and they want to feel trust and they want to feel contentment. Uh, and they want to feel peace, but ultimately they they want to feel happy. We all want the same thing, no matter what where we're coming from in life. We could have the most um, impressive bank account, um, or we could have hardly anything in there. We all want to experience happiness, and that and not happiness because of something or someone outside of ourselves, but a happiness because we feel it inside. Yes. regardless of what's going on outside yeah so that that was my mission I wanted to feel happy and content and peaceful and safe regardless of what was happening in my world and so that that was my mission you know back in 1999 I'd reached a point in my life where um you know I was on my knees 
yeah and it and it was and it was hard going but I, that's that's where i needed to be i really needed to hit rock bottom and then i needed to fall that little bit more and then fall again in order to kind of crack open and let the light in so to speak to to let the healing in let the support in let the help in i had to find that little glimmer of of willingness that i wanted to change i wanted to transform and when I had this question, there was this question, there has to be something more to life than this, kind of started kind of forming in my mind. That's when my life started to change. And that's when I started to learn everything. I, I turned on, I, I woke up and I, and, I, and I wanted to learn how I could access that happiness, how I could access that trust, that love, that peace, that contentment inside me regardless of anyone or anything outside of myself I wanted to become self-sufficient in my own happiness so I love hacking <laughs> I, I'm a hacker so I want to I I'm always looking at whether it's the practicalities of life um, whether that's getting my kids out on time for the school run you know I'll, I'll hack that if we're having an experience where they're you know upset and crying and whatnot I'll, I'll hack the practicalities on that level but I'll also hack um how I'm feeling day to day you know or I'll hack my mind if I'm if I'm finding myself spiraling out in negative thoughts or scenarios that haven't even happened yet I'm a master now at reining that back in and literally deleting it literally it's it's like right where's my focus of attention going now it's going into solution based. It's going into outcome focused, um, or I'll I'll hack it from the feeling center inside. So if I'm feeling overwhelmed or with life, I run three businesses. I have three amazing full power children. I have a beautiful partner. You know that's a juggle for anybody. So if I'm feeling in that overwhelm, I'll hack what needs to happen for me to feel happier, for me to have more time, for me to fill up. So I'm in constant awareness with myself. I'm always bringing myself back into right relationship with, with my own well-being, mm -hmm. my own mental well-being, my own emotional well-being and my own physical well-being. And, and I view that as hacking. So you know, everybody can do that. Everybody can look at the practicalities of their life and they can find a way and and tweak it so that they can create more space, more time, more love, more care, more, more of the good stuff, um, just on that level without having to do any, any kind of self-development work or buy a book or or any of those things, you can just literally sit with, with oneself and look at your life and see where, what brings you more happiness? Yeah. And then just yeah. have that commitment to yourself that that's what you're going to do. And sometimes that's easier said than done, isn't it? You know, we, we can say, right, I'm going to give myself some me time. I'm going to go for that lovely walk in, in the woods. I'm going to spend that time with my daughter and, and, fill up on that happiness but sometimes life just gets in the way and those things don't become a priority anymore so we need to to um find ways that we could so for me i like to put that stuff in the calendar once it's in the calendar it's in stone and we do that this is what we do so that's one of the ways that i've hacked myself so that i end up actioning those things that i um, that will make me and my family feel more happier. But that's that's you know it's it's not very expensive. It's affordable. Anyone can do that just on a practical on a practical level. Yeah, um, right. And so to feel happier. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, what you were talking. Oh, I'm getting on. Oh, I'm getting on. Hmm. Sure, sure. Okay. I said earlier about you know it's it's you have to go inside because so many times people are looking for happiness outside of themselves and they place it on another person another thing or whatever it is and i know for myself it 
I came to my knees when my husband died because I realized that all my emphasis and all my happiness was revolving around him. And I had to realize that it had to come from somewhere else, else I was not going to survive. So it's, it's exactly what you said. And I know there are a lot of people out there because of loss, because of grief. And, you know, loss isn't just about death, but it's, if they don't feel that happiness and that's because they're they're trying to go look for it outside right and that's what you're that's kind of what you teach right yeah absolutely i mean um you know i think buddha said it didn't he you know you can you can swash around in the reflection all you like but nothing's going to change so that's you can make the changes in the outside world but that is simply a reflection of your inner world as within, so without. Um, we, we give our power away over to people all the time. You know, we expect, you know, in relationships, we expect the other person to make us happy. If we're not happy in our relationship, it's because he doesn't put the bins out. He never comes home on time. He, he doesn't, um, you know, tell me I'm beautiful. It's, we give our power away when when we are looking outside of ourselves to bring us happiness. Um, and it's not anybody else's responsibility. It's it's my responsibility 100 percent to bring me happiness. Um, and, but just before I got to that realization, there was this sense of complete disempowerment that that my partner wasn't giving me what I needed, that my job wasn't giving me what I needed. I was on my knees here, here and here. It was all, it was all, I was in a lot of blame. I was in the blame game. Um, but I had to get to that point where it was like, I am the common denominator in my life. There is only me in this game. You know, I can press the, the pause button and restart different house, different job, different county, different partner but it's me that I'm bringing every single time to the table. So that is when my game changed. That is when my whole life started blooming. And in, the, in these last kind of 15 years, I've been then able to help others access their own happiness, their own trust, their own safety, their own love inside themselves because it is in there believe me it's in there it might feel lost it might feel like you have not got the access to it it could be in hiding and protection mode but those those innate gifts that are yours that you were born with that you will die with is in there and um you know, that's what we're doing, aren't we, on Transformation TV, all of us teachers. We're here to help guide each other's and, you know, the people that come to our table to find that again and reconnect with that again. Reconnect with the I am that is actually magnificent, is a, is a beautiful being and deserves all those beautiful things in life, deserves all of that happiness. But it comes from in here first. Yes. And then once you've got that vibration happening, because those good feelings, those good, that good um, sense of self, that good sense of being ignites um, the peptides in the emotional cortex. And they literally, as they as they kind of come out into your body and connect with every cell, they're literally vibrating at a particular frequency. And that frequency is really, really high and it will and, and that frequency emanates out. You know, we're electromagnetic beings, that energy will uh, uh, magnetic, you know, it will emanate out and it will attract like hearted, like minded um, friends, new relationships, job opportunities. You know, you have the eyes to 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 see and the ears to hear all of that really beautiful stuff um, because you are vibrating from that level. So yeah. you're really, you, you know, the work that you do, when you do that inner work, you are literally raising your vibration um, to, to a higher tone, to a higher sense of self, and your world reflects that. 
So toxic people fall away, toxic dramas fall away, toxic sin scenarios and situations fall away. You literally start repelling that yes, um, yes. and start attracting all of that good stuff. And that's just, that's a natural law. It's the law of cause and effects um, and it's effortless. We just have to start with a willingness that we, we, um, we want that change. We want that transformation. We want to feel happy in ourselves for who we are and what we do. Yeah, that's, and Patricia, you, in your teaching segment, um, you talked about, and I loved what you said, you, we, have, we have lost parts of our soul. And, yeah. and I think that that is part of the reason that people, they don't, they don't believe that they can be happy or they might think or believe that they don't deserve it. Absolutely. Not in, in connection with those lost parts of the soul, right? Yeah, absolutely. So as we as we navigate life, you know, from the moment we're conceived, even, and we're in the womb, all the way till we die, and and actually we can inherit, we can bring forth um, some of this fragmented um, soul energy from our family line as well. It's called epigenetic epigenetics. So the scientists have kind of. Mm -hmm. Um, come up to speed with this it's called epigenetics but let's just take this life journey for example so as we're navigating life we can have peak experiences we can have um so peak experiences are either good or bad they can be surprise birthday parties or roller coaster rides um or they can be traumatic events birth is is one of them you know the the birthing process can be quite traumatic naming blaming shaming um, as children, also, you know, car accidents, all these things can make a child freeze in time. So, you know, that I was so shocked I jumped out of my body. We've all said that, you know, I was, I was so shocked I jumped out of my body or I, or I feel like I've left a part of myself um, on that beautiful holiday when people say that kind of thing, you, you quite literally possibly have. So in psychology, we call it dissociation, and, and I like to call it fragmented parts of the, of the self. So in a peak experience, uh, a little part will fragment off, and the rest of you, or, you know, the rest of you will grow and age and have a life experience. But this little part at the age of two is still frozen in time, say so scared of that spider, or having some kind of trauma at the age of six in school, or there might have been a car accident at the age of nine. But all of these little parts all kind of come together and they play a massive role in holding the structure of your life content in play. So that little two-year-old might have some confidence hidden away that she's looking after. That little six-year-old might have self-esteem that she's looking after. That little nine-year-old might have um, courage that she's looking after. And we grow as adults. And then as we navigate life, we get triggered. So people trigger us, situations trigger us. And that's why we can suddenly behave like a three-year-old, even though we run our own businesses, we run our own lives. We can suddenly become 14-year-olds um, sabotaging the scenario that we really want to have happen. Um, we can we can have those mad cap go from one relationship to another relationship to another relationship. Um, they all play a massive part in how we structure our life story. So when we look at, I mean, I run these clearing quests every Wednesday or every other Wednesday on Transformation TV, and it's um, it's like a, a guided meditation where you get to go back and you find that younger self responsible for your current life situation. So this is just a slither of a one-to-one. -one. So we're just on Transformation TV every week. We're doing one. We're claiming one part of the soul back, maturing that up to the here and now. In a one-to-one, -one, we could claim up to 12 different parts. So that part, all of those parts are responsible for a structure 
that's how you create your life story. So that might be relationships or finances or health. And so what we do is we go back, we find those parts that are responsible for that particular story. Once all of them have been found, so it is a finite operation, once all of them have been found, the structure dissolves and it brings you up to the here and now and maturing all of that soul energy up to the here and now, which means you are then in a more adult state of being. You're in a whole state of being and coming to life from that place, which means you are no longer in reaction mode, but you are in creation mode. And it's from this place that we can really start creating that happy whole life that we desire i love that i love that creation mode because i don't i know for myself when when i was stuck in my life and really really stuck in my grief and and didn't think i could go on and really got to that dark night of the soul i mean it wasn't until then that I became aware and I realized I needed to begin to make choices, okay? And then I could move forward and begin to feel my emotions. It's that that connection you have to have with the feeling in your body. It's like the physiology connecting with your heart center and with all these things. And so as I began to work through that and transform, it wasn't Till later on that I began to see that I had this creative spirit within me and it was really interesting because I never knew that I had such creativity and, and I believe we all do I think that we just like stuff it down right because of all those blockages but I love that so in addition to becoming happy you you can become very creative <laughs> Absolutely. We can we can um, tap into and ignite so much that's hidden away. It's amazing. Just recently, um, I've been working with uh, a lovely woman uh, around dyslexia and disentangling dyslexia with stupidity, which a lot of us had um, lumped on us in the 20th century. It's changing massively now in the 21st century. But, you know, 20 odd years ago it was it was it was kind of entrenched with with stupidity and when we do this work the work that you're talking about the work that I do and we disentangle all of that and we free ourselves up that creativity just comes flooding through you know the the creativity the intelligence um, that wisdom all of that all of those inner strengths just it's it just untaps and that that is amazing. That is, you know, such an amazing place to be because we are not um, the limited projections that we had placed on us as children. We're not those labels. We're not the dyslexic one, the stupid one, the, um, the left brainer, the nerd, the uncreative one. That's just what other people thought we were. And we can stay in that for an, an entire lifetime. With this kind of work, when you're really looking at yourself and breaking free from those confines um, that we've been caged in, we can tap into such creativity and inspiration starts to flow. I mean, it's only been these last few years that I've really kind of taken on board my own dyslexia, you know, and. And, and what I've achieved in the last 10 years has been amazing. None of my teachers would have said, oh, you know, she's going to be a best-selling author. There's absolutely no way. But when you untangle yourself from, from other people's limited projections of whom they thought you were, and you set yourself free, literally anything is possible. Anything. And I, I'm, I'm a walking, talking example of that, as you are as well. You know, yeah. That's the great thing about you know being here on Transformation TV because we're all here because of our experiences and our authenticity. And I love what you said, Patricia. I say the same. I say those same things. You know, I tell people everything is possible. It is. It's, it's, it's our own limiting beliefs. And, you know, you, 
you study the biology of belief and I, I love that. And for me, and I'm sure for you too, you have to go back to your belief system. And, and, and I had to examine every belief I had and say, okay, is this really true? Is this the belief that's keeping me stuck? And, you know, I loved in your, in your segment, you talked a lot about the belief of money. I mean, we can do a whole, a whole TV show on money, but you know, it's so interesting because, you know, you said that you were Irish Catholic and I was Protestant, but it's the same idea. We heard that belief about money. Where did that come from? Why did we embrace that, right? Yeah, absolutely. But you know, on one level, it's to keep us in our place. It's to keep us in our place. It's, it's to keep control over a huge portion of society. Um, it keeps people working, the, the nine to fives. It, it keeps people's focus for tension on, on surviving and not, and not thriving in any way. You know, I can totally see the design <laughs> in it. But that is not where we're going right now as a, a, in terms of our consciousness evolution, in terms of the evolution of, of us on a planetary scale. You know, all of those belief structures that don't serve us anymore, they are actually falling away. Whether, whether we actually do the, trans, uh, you know, consciously start doing the transformative work or not, we are finding, I mean, I'm getting lots of information from emails from lots of people where they hadn't even thought about any of this stuff before, but it's, you know, that that um, book is coming their way, that that um, t Facebook Live has popped up on their thread, this person's talking about this and this person's talking about that. There's a, there's a movement that's happening on this planet on a global scale where people are waking up to themselves, looking at what works and what doesn't, ditching it, hacking it and moving forward and becoming lighter, you know, you, 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 we're actually becoming lighter in terms of we don't have to carry all that baggage anymore. You know, the, the baggage that my mum carried and her mum before her and her mum before her, all of that weight, we don't need that anymore. So we are literally letting stuff go um, on, a, on a massive scale. And beliefs are beliefs are one little one aspect of it so when i was talking about all those fragmented parts all of those fragmented parts they're a particular age they're wearing particular clothes they're stuck in a particular environment and they all have a set of beliefs and values that they live by albeit very limited so you can imagine what a seven-year-old's beliefs and values are compared to me at 45 is going to be extremely different. So if that belief system is being triggered and played out, it's going to cause me a lot of trouble at 45. So what, you know, I, I kind of liken it to lots of little mini hard drives. And so we're, we're uploading and defragging all of these little mini hard drives into the, the kind of main mainframe, as it were, in, 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 my, in my subconscious mind and defragging that so that it's really working for me and not working against me really ditching all of those old beliefs those old feelings those old behaviors and starting to create new ones um and and that's that's an amazing place to be and all of the all of our clients and our students you know that come our way they're in all sorts of varying degrees of life from where I was back in 1999 to, um, you know, really conscious and involved, coming for all sorts of different reasons. Um, but this is how we're gonna, well, this is how we are um, evolving on the planet is by each and every one of us doing the work, um, each and every one of us looking inside of ourselves and making that change. But having said that, what I've learned and noted over, you know, since 2004 is that all it takes is one person in each family to do the work, yeah, and come back to a place of wholeness, um, let go of all of that inherited dogmas and belief structures and negative behaviors one person in each family and the ripple effect that that happens within that family unit is amazing i'd love to do a huge study on that alone 
because it shifts and changes the amount of feedback where people have worked um, on themselves around their mums, their dads, not being able to have children and then clearing that stuff and then being able to have children. I mean, it's it's a huge um, shift that's happening. And it just if you're watching this or you're watching anything to do with Transformation TV, I can almost guarantee you that you are that one person in your family um, that is doing the work. And I salute you because you are making that change that needs to happen globally across the planet. Um, and it, it's massive stuff. Yes, yes, it's true. Yeah. And there's always there's always a ripple effect on everything we do. And so, you know, my message is always be kind. You know, always be kind to someone because that's that's a ripple effect in everything we do, you know, and in, in everything. Actually, the negative is a ripple effect as well. Absolutely. So, absolutely. We need to acknowledge that. But so for someone, you know, that is watching and, you know, this sometimes could be so far beyond them or where they're thinking right now. I just want to say you can just ask yourself, am I happy? And if you can't say that you're happy, that's a good indication. You need to go deeper and visit Patricia on www.transformationtv. You know, she's one of the teachers. There's many teachers. Okay. But, and we're all here, we're all doing the same thing, but it's a good way to begin. Just begin to ask yourself that simple question. Okay. If I'm not happy, why not? And can I do something about it? Absolutely. Patricia just told you what you can do. You can transform your life. And Patricia knows this. I know this. And Pat Patricia has studied these things. She has methods. She has ways to help you go through this. I mean, so it's sometimes can sound overwhelming, but like you said, Patricia, when you break it down, you know, you start with one little thing, then it, it, it's feasible, right? Absolutely. Like you say, put your hand on your heart, shut your eyes and just take a moment. Am I happy? And you hear your answer, yes or no. And if you get a no, ask yourself, what needs to happen for me to feel more happiness? And you'll get your answer. It will just float up into your mind. And that's what you do. Little step. You listen to yourself. Act on it. Ask yourself. Listen to yourself. Act on it. Ask yourself. Listen to yourself. Act on it. Because no one can tell you how you're going to feel happy. No one can give you that. You have to give it to yourself. So just ask yourself, am I happy? What needs to happen for me to feel more happiness? and then do it and like you say we're all here to support you but come join us it's on a wednesday every other week so we've got one next wednesday we've got a clearing quest that will help you hack your own happiness bring yourself back to wholeness um and you could do that just every every other week and you would you would see huge shifts in your life um yeah. happen yeah, absolutely. And and Patricia, the other thing you talked about, which I loved in your segment, which you kind of just alluded to it right now, you know, you put your hand on your heart, you ask, right? Am I happy? Well, you have to believe and then receive. Those are your three principles. I love that. You know, it's the truth. You ask, you believe, and then you receive. And why does that happen? Because the laws of the universe, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It's just what happens. We, we, we ask, believe and receive the negative all the time. <laughs> you know, the world conspires to show us what we believe. So if we believe the world's out to get us and we're paranoid, then we will see that, you know, we'll see that in the way people behave with us, the, the way we don't get job opportunities and all of these different things. But if we start to shift our focus and we start to believe that the world's out to help us, that I am fully supported in everything that I do, then the world will start responding like that. But there are, so in terms of the hacking, there's a, there's some amazing mind hacks that can happen because we're not talking about belief that resides in the conscious mind. I kind of call that wishful thinking. 
where your conscious mind is believing that um, I receive gratefully or I'm a money magnet or I'm eight, eight stone or all of those things, that's when it, that, and it doesn't happen. You don't have that. You don't have the new car. You don't have the new job. That's when your belief structures is, is just floating around in your conscious mind. It's your wishful thinking. And what we really want to do is we really want to drop those beliefs down into your unconscious mind, into the hard drive of your mind and become unconscious competence. And when that drops down and becomes unconscious competence, it becomes a program. And that program will be will, will run when triggered automatically without thinking. So when when you have a set of beliefs like um, I trust the world will um, bring me everything that I need when I need it. Um, I am supported. I'm fully supported, fully loved. I feel happy just the way I am. All of these beliefs, if you're just thinking about it, will be wishful thinking. What we need to do is bring it down and drop it into our subconscious mind. In my online boot camp, I show you how. So do, I mean, every single one of our teachers on Transformation TV has some kind of method that will help you drop those new beliefs into the hard drive of your mind so that you fully, it's beyond belief. It, it, it is beyond belief. It's a knowing. It's a its a program. It's innate and it's right deep into your, into every cell of your being. We all offer that on some level. So it's up to you really to go to the Transformation TV platform and have a little look and look at all of us teachers and hone in and feel out who resonates with you. Who would you like to work with? And you will be drawn to somebody. So just trust that instinct and then start working because it's then and only then when those beliefs drop down and become unconscious competence that your whole world magically transforms. Yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I loved that analogy you used about the hard drive because I, before I do what I do now with coaching and my business for over 20 years. I was a computer systems analyst and programmer. So I used to write programs. I wrote hundreds, maybe thousands of programs that would feed into that computer. And you know what? They would give results. And if I put bad code in, bad came out. So I use the, the computer a lot in my analogy because I, that was my experience in life with my work. And so I, I know the power, the power of our minds are even greater than a computer. So I so we, we are the programmer. It's getting into the thing that we are the programmer, you know, and, and at the moment, right up until we started talking, we just kind of haphazardly let the world program us, our mums, our dads, our teachers, our priests, books, movies, friends. We're haphazardly being programmed. And what we're offering you is the chance to kind of step back a little bit and become the programmer, just like you said, Robin. And it's like there is particular ways to make those affirmations or those beliefs become acceptable by the subconscious mind. There's, there's, there's a method that needs to happen. It has to be worded in a particular way so that the subconscious mind will accept it and start playing it out, not just delete it, throw it back out as in, as in wishful thinking. So um, I love that you did that. That's brilliant. <laughs> yes. We're both hackers. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, that was interesting because I was using my left brain, you know, the logical part so much. Yeah. Now, like I spoke earlier, because of my transformation, this creativity is coming out. So I'm writing books and, you know, I'm doing other things that just bring that process into fruition. And I love that. So it's a lovely fusion. So I was completely opposite. I was really right brain. So I was really creative. I was a performer, a dancer, you know, an artist. No way could I run businesses. I couldn't couldn't 
spend time writing, you know, all of those things with, you know, lists, being analytical, all of that left brain stuff. No, not for me. But once I started to harness the left brain and did, I purposely wrote programs to um, fuse the left brain with my right brain and drop the barrier down in between so that I had access to the left brain. I purposely wrote a program so that I could do that then it all shifted as well. It's amazing. We had a really similar experience. We have created perfect balance. We <laughs> have. Um, perfect balance is, is it's great. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, and we're happy. See, we're smiling, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is wonderful. We that thing of just bringing out the endorphins in our bodies you know we've got to do whatever it takes to bring the endorphins out and whether that is you know getting together with a good friend and having a chat like we are um food doing stuff practically and moving moving is really important to to kind of move the endorphins around so running or dancing or yoga any of those things um, will help shift the chemical compound inside and really flood out the endorphins to make you feel happy too right yes absolutely well, this has been a great great interview is there anything that you feel that you want to talk about a little more before we end we have a few more minutes uh, oh I don't know yeah <laughs> oh you know it's that thing again of just being willing because I know everybody we're all at different stages in life and we all have um, we're all in different places and and just know that wherever you are right now is not where you're going to be in five years time where you want to be in five years time you have a say in that you can you can you can literally project your focus of attention out to where you would like to be in five years time and anchor in a pathway to that place the ultimate version of you the one that is pure happiness feels total trust is completely supported is loving and being loved in equal measure that is possible. Uh, you just have to be willing to want it and have a desire to want it. And then in my experience, and I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of people on a planetary scale, just having that willingness and that desire is the very, very first step. Um, and the world, the universe um, conspires to give you the right people, the right opportunities, the right situations that will help you get there and become the highest, bestest version of yourself. Yes, I love that, Patricia. And, you know, I just, I love what you said about you won't be where you are in five years. And I would just like to say to the people that I know, listen, that are survivors of losing someone they love to suicide, see, they, they don't, they can't envision right now what their life is going to be like in the future. But as you are listening to Patricia today, you can make your life better and it can be good again. And I'm here to testify that it can. And so, you know, go visit Tr Patricia. She can work with you. I can work with you because I know I don't want you to stay stuck. Patricia doesn't want you, Patricia wants you to be happy. <laughs> and I, I don't want you to stay stuck in your grief. And so we're here to tell you that there's, there's many teachers that can help you. If it's not me and it's not Patricia, there's Kim. I see Kim out there and I see Jenna Harris. Thank you ladies for being here. They're one of our awesome teachers. So, you know, there's many teachers and we just need to be spreading the message, right? Just like the ripple effect. Absolutely, spreading the message that actually you are not alone. We are not alone. We do have each other. That is why Transformation TV um, has been born and been creative so that we can literally be a collaboration right across the planet that holds each other. We can be that extra layer of support um, for each other, no matter where you are in your life journey, there's, we've all been there. We've all been there, bought the t-shirt and we've actually come through it. And not only have we done that personally, but in terms of our work, 
we've witnessed people doing that every single one of the every single one of my clients that have come and sat in front of me have moved forward in a really positive way in their lives you know I see that it's a real experience and as far as I'm concerned if I can do it and they can do it then there's absolutely no reason why you can't do it either yeah. we can all we can all do what we achieve what we set our minds on to achieve we just have to have that little place inside that's willing and one of the best questions to ask of yourself and ask of the universe ask of God is how does it get better than this and I like to ask that question when times are really really good how does it get better than this and when times are really really rough how does it get better than this it's a magical question I'd like you just to you know I'm going to leave you with that actually a little bit of home play for you to bring that question into your life um, and see how your life responds to that um, and then if anyone would like to feed back then please do so on our thread um, today that would be really really interesting how does it get better than this yeah. because it's it's a beautiful question and it and it leaves the universe god life up to possibility yeah you're not trying to define it with your limitations you're leaving it up to bring you the best the the happiest the nurturing um goodness that the the, the world can provide so how does it get better than this well thank you patricia that's a beautiful way to end it and that's it's it's good food for for thought for everyone to take with them and thank you for taking the time Oop, i'm going in and out thank you for being here with us i appreciate it i know we had a little glitch in the time but hey it's all good and Yay. i i want to let um the viewers know because i know a lot of people aren't on with us right now but they do see it i mean we get we get thousands of viewers they'll see it they'll see it on facebook live i post it all over social media so i'm i'm part of the ripple effect here but um i'm going to be out of the country i'm going uh, to vietnam cambodia and thailand i'm very excited and patricia is going to be the the interview host for two weeks so thank you so much thank you for doing that patricia i appreciate it Home. I hope I can um, fill your shoes, Robin. Oh yes, you'll you'll. It'll be wonderful. It'll be good fun. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Absolutely. So with that, um, we'll just end right now. And if we get any messages, if we see your comments, we'll respond to you. And everyone yeah. have a blessed day and be happy. Yay! Thank you. Bye. Bye for now.